So in a hypothetical scenario, it's your birthday, your wife comes up to you and says, Stuart, I'm gonna cook whatever you want. What is it? Yeah, it's gotta be a steak. Um, I love I, I love food. Um, I, I like going out, I like going to restaurants. If we were gonna cook at home, it'd be a steak. If we were going out, um, it would have to be my favorite restaurant, which is Beefy Boys in Hereford. Absolutely phenomenal, world-class burgers. Although I do enjoy going to any restaurant, it's the company I enjoy, uh, but I love eating Beefy Boys. So Stuart, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you managed to get into the business of travel safety? Well, my whole career, really, my whole adult life since leaving school, I've been involved in some form of security in, in a, one way or another. I, I left uh, school and went and joined the army. I served eight years in the army, got to travel extensively, see some great locations, some not so nice. I served in places like Northern Ireland, Bosnia, Kosovo, uh, out to the Middle East and the Far East, I, I got to travel a lot to. When I left there, um, still relatively young, I was only, only 25, I went into the corporate uh, protection world and I started doing what people would class as uh, close protection or bodyguarding. Worked extensively in London before moving to Africa and then on to the Middle East. Uh, I got to work in places like uh, Iraq and then also working at uh, a high-end diplomatic protection. So I worked for a foreign prime minister for a long time travelling all around the world when, whenever they moved. Uh, got to work extensively in, in that environment. And I enjoyed protecting people and taking the skills that I'd learned uh, to keep people safe. And then I started transitioning into the passion I had was teaching people and showing them how to be safe. So not everyone's gonna have their own bodyguard or protection officer. So how do you enable the average person to travel? And we, we started, there was a few of us started teaching these skills. Uh, pretty much the same time, about 2003, 2004, into 2005, everyone was training for Iraq and Afghanistan. But there was the whole corporate market that needed to send travellers around the world. And we started developing what we called at the time the, the personal security uh, and travel safety awareness course. And we were delivering this, I think in, in 2005, I delivered it in 16, 17 countries around the world, uh, multiple times with uh, myself and a, a colleague I worked with, Ginge Johnson. It was, uh, it was great. Over the years, I started looking and realizing that uh, myself and my colleagues who I worked with, we were not scalable. We couldn't train 10,000 people in a short period of time. So I started looking at where this would evolve to and how we could use this better to meet the requirements in the modern world. So about uh, 2012, 2013, I started looking more at how we could turn this into technology and release one of the first e-learning modules into the marketplace for travel safety. It was more computer-based learning and very simple and easy to follow, but it took what we would deliver in a couple of days down to about an hour and a half because we realized most people wouldn't have had the time to spend a day doing this. Once we've done that, I then looked at uh, how we could make this more impacting, powerful and relevant and really wanted to find a way of, uh, of getting this to the current marketplace, which is why we're working on what we're doing now and releasing the new range of powerful, impacting and memorable travel safety learning apps and tools to help all travellers stay safe. So when I founded the business, um, I was doing everything. I, I had to cover all eventualities to set it in place. Last year, I brought a phenomenal uh, business partner, uh, James Barton, who's the Chief Technical Officer, to help turn my ideas into a reality. So whereas I have a vision and I can see what I believe is the market requirement, um, but I don't have the in-depth technical capability to make this a reality. So I sat down with James and we looked at how we can turn a vision and reality and brought a phenomenal team in from media, um, video in, social uh, media development team. And we looked at how we could do something differently to create a, a scalable product that could go around the world and we could be the leader in travel safety solutions. You mentioned that travel safety is evolving all of the time. What do you see the future of travel safety being? Oh, that's simple. I want to see a travel safety solution in everyone's pocket or hand through a smartphone around the world. Historically, it's relied on people like me with my skills and experience that you spend a lot of money to stand up and face-to-face -face training or to do assessments or help people prepare to travel. This is different. I believe the way that technology's moved, that there's, there's ways to put 
a cost-effective solution into everyone's hands, not just corporations, into individual travellers. So if they're going on holiday, they can know if it's safe for them and how to prepare. But I see that as the future of travel safety. So to look at the other side of the coin, and what would you say your biggest frustration with the current travel safety market is? Um, as much as I love this industry and spent uh, over two decades of my life in it, um, I think it, it's quite a bit behind the curve. So it has been designed to build solution for corporate security managers, uh, what we were doing 10, 15 years ago, which was perfect and great. And there's some phenomenal companies out there that are providing it, but I believe there's a massive barrier for the average person and the average uh, individual within an organization to receive the correct level of travel safety training, awareness and tools. So I, I would like to see uh, that this barrier is broken down and it's no longer maybe smoke and mirrors or we do it this way because we've always done it. It's completely transparent, it's easy to use and anyone can understand it. We need to change the terminology that we use within this secure industry because we're providing solutions for people that are not in the secure industry. They don't understand the terminology that we would speak. So we need to make it simple, easy to use and powerful. They've got to, they've got to understand why they are doing something and why we have provided these tools for them. At this point in time, the industry is probably looking at tracking as being the most effect, one of the most effective solutions for travel safety right now. What, what are your views on tracking? Hmm. Uh, this is, is an interesting topic. Um, tracking has its uses and I never want to take away from that. And a lot of times in the past, I've used tracking solutions around the world. And at the right time and the right place, they're very effective. But they're a control measure. It's something that you do as part of the whole travel safety solution. So there's, there's also some negatives with it. So people using it on a smartphone, it can drain your battery very quickly. And a smartphone can be one of the best assets you've got for your personal security. When you're traveling, you need to remain in communications. So you've got that, you've got the intrusive issues around the world, but I'd like to see it. if someone needs to use tracking, I would say because the, the area they're going to um, is probably more volatile or they've got a specific problem within their organization and it's part of a range of other solutions. If they have not assessed the risk prior to going, and looked at what possible problems they can face, then how do they know they need a tracking solution? To have a one-size-fits-all tracking solution, I don't believe is uh, the correct way forward. I've spoke with many risk management companies on this, and most of the other thought leaders in the industry place would agree with me. But what has been dictated is what they believe the end user needs. And because there's been a lack of cost-effective solutions uh, that help assess risk, and help people stay safe when traveling. Tracking has been the easiest one to tick the box. And as the security industry, the bulk of them have said to the clients, this is what you need. I believe the time is changing where actually people go, no, it's not what we need. We understand in this country, we'll use tracking to support all our other operations. But as a one size fits all, no, I don't believe it's the correct solution for the marketplace. That might be quite controversial, but I'm bringing uh, all my years of experience as operating on the ground into uh, travel safety and looking at how we can use technology to provide the best solution for anyone, anywhere. Right at the heart of travel safety is something called duty of care. We just want to explain that in a little bit more detail and particularly why businesses and organisations would need to take um, greater consideration of it. Yeah, du duty of care is, uh, is paramount, but it can also be misused. So a lot of people say you need this solution because it fulfills your duty of care. A duty of care, as an employer, you want to provide a safe working environment for your volunteers and your staff when you send them around the world. So in your offices, at your home location, you would make sure that the staff were properly uh, prepared for what they needed to do there. Same as you send them to France, uh, South America, um, Far East, uh, Asia, wherever you want to send people, you need to provide a safe working uh, environment for them to check that they know how to deal with potential problems, what uh, concerns, what's going to affect them, what do they do if they lose a passport, or what do they do if, if they're caught in a terrorist incident. You need to provide them, and first you need to assess the risks, 
look at what problems they're going to face when going, and then put in solutions that will provide um, adequate cover to help increase their awareness and their safety. You can't put people in a, uh, a bubble and expect nothing to happen to them, but you can prepare them and you can stack everything in your favour to make sure they understand about the problems that they could face, they've got it all covered and they know what to do in the event of uh, an emergency. And uh, this, this is uh, progressing more and more in uh, of recent court cases that have happened where people are being sued for the duty of care requirement. Individuals or employees or volunteers are saying, I've been kidnapped in this country. I wasn't prepared before I went. So they start taking lawsuits. And obviously the corporate organisations are looking at reputational risk and financial risk uh, of sending people around the world. There's also the right thing to do. I wouldn't want to work for an employer who's happy to send me anywhere in the world without preparing me to go. Theoretically speaking, if you got the chance to rewrite your yearbook quote that goes underneath your photo, what would you put? Uh, that's a hard one. There's so many great quotes out there, so many inspirational. Uh, one that springs to mind first is uh, from Gandhi. Be the change that you want to see in the world. 